Today we're going to um, weigh beehives, uh, getting ready for winter feed. Um, for years I did the, uh, you know, heft the back of the hive deal, you know, and if they're heavy like lead, then they're okay. And if they're not, you feed them until they're heavy like lead. Well, that usually means you feed more than you need to. And if you have a thousand hives of bees and you feed a couple of gallons, you know, extra, these, these beehives are like teenagers. They, you never stop eating. And there's thousands of dollars wasted. So, and also, if you do the, the heft method, after a couple of apiaries, they all feel heavy. So, we came up with an idea here that we weigh all the beehives and we feed them what they need. And we feed them to a target weight. And over the years, I found that my target weight in northern Vermont is 155 or 160 pounds for a hive that's two deeps and a medium super or three deeps for winter. That's their brood nest. So that's a pretty good weight. So my hive stands are two by fours on edge, you see. Two four foot two by fours with a one foot two by four between each end. And you can put two beehives on one of that, these hive stands. But the hive stands happen to be about the same height as the outer cover. So to weigh a beehive, you take the outer cover off and you lay it on the ground next to the end of the hive stand. And then you put a piece of plywood with your, with your scale on the uh, outer cover. And what we're going to do is we're going to tip the hive sideways and put the scale under it and tip it up onto the scale. So let's do that. So this is a 240 pound industrial commercial utility scale, heavy duty. So you tip the hive sideways. Now picking it up. The taller it is, the easier it is to tip. Okay, and so we'll slide this under about halfway and pick the hive up, tip the hive up onto the scale like this and balance it and go read the weight and put the, put the phone right down there and you can see that this this hive weighs 120 pounds and so if my hive target weight is 155 to 160 I can feed them a gallon of syrup for every 10 pounds they're light and so with four gallons, at 115, they're four gallons, it's gonna bring me to 155. So now we know the scale, the number. We write the number on the back next to the, uh, next to the number where, where this is, on the 21st of May, 2018, this colony, when we reversed it, had nine combs of brood. Good one. They made 90 pounds of honey in 2018 and they weigh 115 pounds. So Now we could feed these things four gallons of syrup, one gallon at a time, put it on top of the feed hole, and come back in a week or a few days and refill it and do it again, and we can come back here four times. Well, that's great if the bees are in your backyard, but if the bees are in an out apiary an hour away, that's not such a great plan. So we're going to feed it to them all at once. And that's a better plan anyway. Because if you feed it to them slowly, they're going to raise brood out of it. If you feed it to them fast, it's like a nectar flow. And they have no choice but to store it in the comb. And that's what they do. So we're going to feed them four gallons all at once. Okay, then we don't sit the cans directly on the frames. We put them on little shims that I've cut. I've got buckets and buckets of these shims. And we're putting on four, four of these, uh, four gallons. So we put these uh, shims down like this. Now 
Now the feed cans are uh, gallon paint cans that you can buy and do from a paint supply place. Um, they're epoxy lined. They have the gray lining. If you don't get that gray lining in there, the acids from the syrup corrode the metal and it, it makes a mess and it's black. And, <coughs> and you put five or six six penny nail holes somewhere near the center of the hole. You push the, you push the bottom and top together so it pushes the air out and when you turn it over, the syrup stops. Okay? And it'll, so it'll stop dripping. And then the bees, it forms a vacuum, and the bees have to uh, suck it out of the holes. Now this time of year, it's getting a little late to feed bees. It's getting cold. And, uh, and if you put the, the feeder cans above the inner cover, uh, the bees have to break their cluster to go up and get the syrup. So. That's not a good plan because if it's too cold, they can't break their cluster to go up and get the syrup. Also, the syrup gets cold and they don't take it as fast. But when you put it directly on the frames like this, the bees actually cluster around the cans, warming the syrup. They don't have to break their cluster to go get the syrup. And let's see, do we have a feeder super down? And so they can continue taking it in, uh, in colder weather than they would. So then we put an empty uh, high body shell around. Put the inner cover on. Put the outer cover on. Now feeding these things to target weight, they're good till April. I don't have to slog my way out with fondant and candy boards and all that sugar bricks and all that noise. The syrup is in the comb where it belongs. It's not granulated sugar on a piece of newspaper on top of the combs. It's not sugar bricks and it's not candy boards, which, you know, since the beginning of time, nobody has ever put candy boards on bees <clears throat> till now. The syrup is in the comb. The bees remain clustered. You're not asking them to work on sucrose all, all winter long because it's there. They're clustered. They're quiet. The food is in the comb where it should be. That's how you feed your bees.